Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, 700 Fijians lose cancer battle annually. Seasonal workers must uphold Fiji's reputation. And a huge gap remains between forest harvesting and forest conservation. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Sagar. 700 Fijians lose their battle against cancer every year. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services has also revealed over 1,000 new cases of cancer is recorded annually. Pranita Prakash reports. World Cancer Day was marked today in Suva to bring the attention on the Health Ministry's objective to reduce deaths that are diagnosed with cancer. In Fiji, every year, the Ministry of Health records over 1,100 new cases of cancer. Of this, slightly more than 50% are in women and mainly breast and cervical cancers. This is not to say that men cannot have breast cancer. Men have breast cancer too, but not as much as women do. In males, the most common cancer in males is prostate cancer, and it's also the third commonest cancer in Fiji. Dr. Isimeli Tukana says cancer burden can be controlled when everyone works together. Currently, the ministries carries out cervical cancer screening with breast examination, there are early warning signs like feeling a small lump in the breast, abnormal vaginal discharge, difficulty in passing urine, skin ulcers or colored lesions. Please see your doctor or visit your nearest health center or any health facility. Meanwhile, the Suba Oldies Rugby Club is working closely with the Fiji Cancer Society to raise awareness on cancer in men. Every year we fundraise uh, and we target 1,500 men Fiji-wide. Uh, last year we managed to uh, surpass that number, uh, we managed to test about 1,600 men. Out of those, uh, a fairly high number of about 120 uh, men were tested positive for cancer. Calls have been made for people to provide moral support and assistance to those diagnosed with cancer or are cancer survivors. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Good reputation of our workers in New Zealand under the recognized seasonal employer scheme has prompted employers to hire more locals. Employment Minister Chone Osamate says the New Zealand government officials and employers have stressed work opportunities will not only be dependent on the caps provided, but also on the conduct of workers. Savaratambo reports. Employment Minister Johnny Usamate met with government officials and employers in New Zealand where policy issues relating to the seasonal workers program were discussed at length. In terms of our workers, a uh, good thing that we've seen from this trip is that the reputation of our workers has increased, is enhanced. There are still some uh, few areas where we had some issues, but I think that is also a reflection of the changes that we've had in our system here. We've tightened up our um, screening of people, we've, we've maintained the medical assessment. Usamate says New Zealand employers are looking to hire more Fijians to work on their farms. Employers in New Zealand, they all want the numbers to go up. Because the horticulture and viticulture, these sectors are expanding very, very rapidly. And in order for that expansion to take place, they need a regular, productive labor supply. This news has been welcomed by many, as this will mean more remittance for Fiji. I believe that information will bring joy to many of us, especially to those that are looking for a job. It's good news for us Fijians. The New Zealand government has increased the cap for small Pacific Island nations from 10,500 to 11,100 this year. A total of 280 Fijians are currently working in New Zealand under the program. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. The Ministry of Forests is concerned at the huge gap between forest harvesting and forest conservation. According to statistics, more trees are still being cut down compared to those replanted. Eleanor Trangaviu reports. Bonolebo has a total forest cover of 382,055 hectares, comprising of 35% of the total forested area in Fiji. During the last financial year, from August 2016 to July 2017, 
a total of 1,568.7 hectares of forest area was harvested. And in terms of replanting, only a total land area of 143.5 hectares was replanted during the same period. We have been harvesting. Uh, we have been harvesting a lot, but uh, not much effort on uh, what's it? replanting. Speaking at the opening of a nursery in Bua this week, yeah, Minister yeah, Osia yeah, Nengamu yeah, says yeah, for the Bua province yeah, alone, 605.1 hectares of forest area was harvested during the same time and only about 43.1 hectares was replanted. This contributes to only about 9% towards the total forest cover that was removed in Vanoi Levu and only 7% of the forest area that was removed from the province. The challenge of my ministry is to balance the two forest harvesting and forest conservation. And replanting of forests is essential in the attainment of this objective. With the current rate of replanting, the Ministry of Forest is looking at ways it can obtain climate funding to help in our reforestation efforts. My level and my, the, my peers, so we have been discussing how best to take, uh, to take advantage of the climatic uh, assistance uh, on climate change, you know, the funding. So we are working on that. The total forest cover for Fiji, including mangroves, is 1.1 million hectares representing 61% of the country's total land area of 1.8 million hectares. Eleanor Turangiviu, FBC News. Aloga and Somila in Bua has become the first to construct and manage his own nursery to supply seedlings to support reforestation efforts. Eleanor Turangiviu reports the company J. Dil Somilas has set a precedence for others to follow suit. After eight years in the timber industry, James Kumar saw it fit to give back to the land what his company has taken from it, the forest. And a nursery to breed the tree seedlings is the answer to this. If I'm going to one day finish everything, grows, eh? That's why I start my nursery, the place I harvest, I cut, plant. Kumar has set a milestone for the province of Mboa and Vanuelevu as a whole, becoming the only logger and sawmilla to have his own seedling nursery, a move welcomed by the Ministry of Forests. Having a nursery of its own will enable the company to provide tree seedlings to replace trees that they are going to harvest and extract, creating an effective platform to foster a long-term win-win relationship with us. Opening the nursery in Domboimbo this week, Minister Osia Nengamu says the onus is on the company to produce the required quantity and quality of seedlings. We are excited about the prospect of public and private partnership and we encourage the people of Mua to join us in our vision for the sustainable management of our forest and tree resources. This achievement has been hailed a positive signal of the company's commitment towards the sustainable management of our forests and contributes to Fiji's commitment to deliver its sustainable development goals. Eleanor Turangiviu, FBC News. Still to come, police were acting on complaints, says DPC Rusiatit Ravu. And Nescafe, make your move, dance competition heats up, stay with us. Bula, Kero Mai Sinatoka, Kero Ndotali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have an energy, uh, combination of Bula, Ndotali Taka and Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. We have got our silly talent, Nagura Rama in our money, Nanduma, we do talent again and the business value of Nagudo Rong, Barong in Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti in Wonga and Vienna. Ministers who gathered at the 20th Conference of Commonwealth Education have emphasized the need to prioritize and expand access to education. The conference, which ended yesterday, saw the adaptation of the Nandi Declaration that highlighted the key areas which needed to be focused on in the sector. Philippe Nekaso has more. It was a successful conference with objectives of the meeting being met as the ministers had robust discussions over the past few days. However, there were more complex questions. How are we going to do that? What will we have to do? The, the, the answer that 
education was important to absolutely every one of the sustainable development goals was correct. But how were our countries going to support each other? Education Minister Aya Said Kayum says the discussions were critical as the focus was on improving the quality of education. Focusing in the countries as we are, for example, in Fiji carrying out various reforms uh, to do teacher training, to do salaries, etc., the way forward in respect of, for example, our curriculum. They're also committed to tackling the persistent challenges facing education by ensuring that children get the best start. Continuously, we have these uh, various organizations, various civil society groups, and teacher groups, and student groups that were meeting and they also provided some feedback in respect of you know, how they saw the education sector. That in itself is very important. The next conference of Commonwealth Education Ministers meeting will be held in Kenya in 2021. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. The Fiji Police Force has clarified that a YouTube video of two women and two children that is being circulated on Facebook were brought in for questioning at the Lotoka police station last Saturday for a case of domestic dispute. Claims have been made that the women and the children were not treated fairly while at the police station. Rachel Nart reports. Claims have been made in a video that a woman who was accompanied by her mother was told that she will be detained until Monday and no reasons were given for this. The video also stated that the officer did not offer any help when the woman's one-year-old son was crying for milk. Acting Deputy Police Commissioner Rusiati Tundravu says the two women seen and heard in the video and the complainant were all residing in the same home. Tundravu says the report was received late Saturday night and the decision to bring one party which included the mother and her daughter as well as the children at the time was made in the interest of their safety. He says the situation between the parties had escalated and they were concerned about their welfare and the safety of the children. Tundravu says during this time all assistance was rendered to the children by the women officers on duty. He says however the police is ready to look into any issues the women are not happy with. Tundravu says they will also be conducting an internal investigation on the conduct of the investigating officer. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Over the years, the art of dance has evolved from cultural performances into a profession. Many Fijians are now taking the art to the next level by entering into competitions and exhibiting their talents. Kritika Kumar caught up with some finalists of the Nescafe Make Your Move 2 with Today FM in Suba and files this report. The Nescafe Make Your Move 2 with Today FM showcased a diverse range of dances, making the semi-final round tough for judges. I do look at the ability of a dancer to, you know, to grasp their beads, to be flexible, to know their moves and just to really show their talent, their, their hidden talent. As for the dancers, this platform not only provides an opportunity to bring to life their passion, but also helped overcome challenges. The moves I'm doing, they're really hard for me. So while learning that moves, I got a bit scratches and stuff, but um, I've been dancing from primary school and onwards. So dance has been there every time for me. <sighs> Dance is my life. I feel a bit more confident and uh, believing in myself more to be able to take part in the competition. Always meeting up after school to go and like practice and get our art uh, to where we want it to be. Of the 12 competitors, six have moved to the final, which will be held on 10th March at Suva's Albert Park. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Ahead in sports, Highlanders pip the Blues in Super Rugby. And Lambasa Thamstavua in VPL, this and more coming up. Moala Rala Ranalika, Otikongo in the town of Singapore, and Dotalitaka and Avarong and Ambula Fan, number two in a serve. We are the Rachubuni Kurnabili, Borani Batskara and Barabin and Rana, Dotalitakin and Avarong and Ambula Fan. Number two in the series. Bula! Bula FM, number two in the series. The Melbourne Rebels proved too strong for the Queensland Red side after a 41-19 victory in the first round of Super Rugby matches last night. Both teams came out firing in the first half of the match, but lack of discipline and unforced errors gave the Rebels the opportunity to progress.
Meanwhile, in another encounter, the Highlanders came from behind to beat the Auckland Blues 41 points to 34 in their first Super Rugby clash and retained the Gordon Hunter Memorial Trophy. The Blues led the Highlanders 24 points to 17 during the halftime break. France defeated Italy 34 points to 17 this morning to claim their first victory of the 2018 Six Nations Championship. It was a close encounter for both teams as France led 11 to 7 over the Azuris during the halftime break. With the captain, a foot short. I think he scored. I think you're right, Jonathan. Sort of a sort of serial offender. Italy will take advantage of the advantage. What a surge by Italy. Two, and he still gets the pass away to Bonneval. Russell for the line. Was he overplaying? No, he wasn't. Igor Bonneval in support. Scores. Straight to the middle. If somebody calls it out wide, they must score. Pass the ball well and does. Yeah, I think they isolated Prezo there. They targeted him. Good set play. Definitely off the French player. The Lombasa football side hammered Tavua five points to two in the Vodafone Premier League today. Tavua, which beat Nandi last week, was brought back to earth. And the Bambasinga Lions showed too much class. Ratu Anare Apenisa and Ashnil Raju got a brace of goals each, while Antonio Tuivuna also scored. Tonight in the VPL, Suva plays Nandi in No Sorry at 7 p.m., while tomorrow, Tavua meets Draketi and Rewa battles Spa. The Suva women's football team is all geared up for the Vodafone Under-19 League that was launched today at the Fiji football headquarters in Suva. The capital side will compete with five other teams in the southern zone as players get a chance to push for selection in the national team. Eroni Tuinuku reports. The Whites will be using this competition to expose the talent that is needed to take women's football to the next level. Women's participation in, in uh, football, uh, we want to um, have more participation in the upper level as well. The introduction of women's competition will benefit the players and the development of the sport. We're really excited to be part of this league. It's the first of its kind and um, yes, we have been preparing very well. I hope that um, we're, um, the girls are looking forward to all of this as well. Fiji FA Vice President and Head of Women's Football Susan Weiss says this competition will be a turning point for local women's football. We are having a launch here in the south with uh, six teams. Altogether there will be a total of 55 matches played during the league. Suva, Nasinu, Rewa, Tailevu Naitasiri, Tailevu North and Navua will compete in this league. Eroni Tuinuku, FBC Sports. Roy Krishna's Wellington Phoenix football team failed to deliver last night as his side went down to the Central Coast Mariners 1-0 at Central Coast Stadium. Krishna's attempt for a goal in the 55th minute of play was unsuccessful after it hit the crossbar, which could have been a game-changer for the Phoenix side. Showers and thunderstorms, especially in the afternoon, were experienced over most parts of the country today. Taking a long look in the west, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers and few thunderstorms. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy periods with some showers, showers and thunderstorms developing later tomorrow. And up north, fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. At sea, moderate east to northeast winds, moderate seas. For the tides, low tide is at 7.51 p.m. and high tide is at 2.14 tomorrow morning. Sunrise will be at 6.04. For tomorrow, occasional showers, heavy at times, isolated heavy falls are expected. As for Monday, rainy weather to continue. Recapping the main story, 700 Fijians lose cancer battle annually. Seasonal workers must uphold Fiji's reputation. And huge gap remains between forest harvesting and forest conservation. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Top question, 
This week, we are asking, should strict penalties be implemented against those pedestrians who use mobile phones while crossing roads? You can visit our FBC website to answer. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FBC News or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. रुको रेकी रेकी से सुबह मेरी आंख खुलती है तो मैं मिर्ची एफएम सुनती हूँ मिर्ची एफएम इस नंबर वन इट्स सो हॉट हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिजरेटर से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्च